Oi, you know what time it is. You're tuned in listening to the Dry That Aussie Metal Guy. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of his content when it drops. And remember, stay brutal, you mad dogs. Roof. G'day, hey, how you all going? Let's try that awesome metal guy here with Crack.com and with Cranium Radio. So today, tonight, wherever you are in the world, it's a great pleasure. I'm getting to have a chat with Zoe and Ashok of Cradle of Filth who are due to annihilate the Australian shore starting Tuesday on Perth, I believe. And I know you're um, off to Adelaide on the Wednesday, then down to Melbourne on the 27th and over to Sydney on the 28th and Brisbane rounding up on the 29th. Thank you very much for joining me, guys. I know you must be keen for this tour. Pleasure to be here. Absolute Thanks pleasure. For having us. Absolute pleasure. First off, I've got to ask you, Zoe, I know you um, started a couple of years ago, but can you tell me a little bit about the whole process of joining on for Cradle of Filth and kind of what that journey has been like for you so far? As I've said before, I'm immensely grateful because friends spoke my name when the opportunity arose. So essentially... I had a friend who was engaged, is engaged to Cradle of Filth's former tour manager. When the position opened up at the last minute, they needed an American because it was a US tour coming up very soon. I got contacted and here I am. So eternally grateful for that. Yeah, nice. So um, can you tell me quickly um, about who some of your biggest musical influences and kind of how you feel they've shaped um, your style? I listen to a wide range of music. If we're talking about metal, uh, Amorphous, Winter Sun, Camelot, Nightwish, um, Epica, uh, Dark Tranquility, um, and of course, Cradle of Filth, because I listened to Cradle of Filth quite a bit growing up as well. So I think I was, uh, was well prepared to step into this role genre-wise. Yeah, and um, Ash, you've come back on the band. You've been behind some of the, the most amazing guitar riffs the band has to offer as well. Can you tell me a little bit about how you feel um, Cradle of Filth's sound has evolved over the years and kind of what role you feel you've played in that evolution as well? That's a question for me? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I started to listen to Cradle uh, around, uh, uh, actually, when Cruelty and the Beast uh, was uh, like a, uh, newcomer back in 1998 that um i think that was kind of game changer in our in our you know sphere of uh, of a black metal uh which inspired me a lot and uh when i joined the band in 2014 and we were about to write uh back then new record hammer of the which is quite soon after i joined the band uh i kind of tried you know to continue that legacy but also uh bring out my own background which is more i'm more like you know hard rock kind of kid uh you know white snake uh, judas priest uh, racer x and and accept and, and and the kind of stuff so uh i think i brought uh, something uh in my style to the band yeah, can you elaborate a little bit on that and just tell me a little bit about you, your guitar techniques and kind of how you mm -hmm. approach the, the music that you bring to the band? I mean, um, as I mentioned, you know, uh, I, um, I also listen to a variety of styles. Yeah? So, and uh, and, uh, and um, I don't even uh, need to listen to the music, which includes guitar, to be honest. Yeah? I'm a big fan of... Uh, uh, Bands like Depeche Mode and speaking of Australia, uh, Dead Can Dance uh, are my favorite bands. So it's a uh, music for me. It's more about uh, rather than technical ex technical aspect. It's uh, more uh, about you know transfer transferring of emotions, you know, into the music. And no matter what instrument you play. Yeah, nice, nice. So we do have the tour coming up. Um, can you um, jump back to you, Zoe? Can you tell me what you're most excited about for the upcoming Australian tour and kind of how you're preparing for it vocally? I mean, um, as I've said in other interviews and online, uh, I'm from Arizona and I guess Australia is like a giant Arizona in terms of like venomous reptiles and, and spiders and things. So I'm excited about that because I think those are gorgeous, fascinating creatures. And then vocally, uh, I mean... 
musically, I got to keep myself prepared every day. You have to keep yourself warmed up like an athlete all the time. So that's this nothing has changed about that routine, I would say. Is it your first time over in Australia? I know, Ash, you've been here a few times touring as well. Um, is, is this your first time over in Australia, though, Zoe? This is my first time. My my family has been there before. They loved it, and they've told me to expect great things. So, Yeah, well, Ash can tell you you're probably not battling snakes and evil reptiles when you get over here. It's not really that bad, <laughs> as they say. <laughs> it's not too bad. <laughs> I want, I want, I want to see, because I, I just find venomous creatures fascinating. Of course, growing up here in, in Arizona, that's such a big part of our lives, not in the sense that you see them all the time and they kill people, but they're just fascinating creatures. So, uh, Yeah, that we do. We have some of the most venomous snakes and spiders in the world. I've actually played here a few times before. Can you tell me about some of your favorite memories from previous tours here in Australia? Um. I've been uh, in Australia two times. It was a 2018 yep. and 2019. It was uh, again uh, like this time after like a almost long five year gap. And uh, 2019 was special because we were celebrating Cruelty and the Beast, uh, which is you know special record for me. So playing it uh, in its entirety uh, was just great. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, I remember nothing but a great time in Australia, actually. <laughs> That's so kind of can't, can't wait to be there. It's been too long. Yes, it has been too long. We had that, that whole bloody pandemic thing that happened that kind of threw the world into shit. Yeah. I know a lot of people are really keen to kind of have you back down here playing again as well. Um, can you tell me a little bit about where else I hear? Come back up to my note. What kind of tunings you using for for the songs at the moment, Mark? Uh, I mean, uh, the majority of Cradle catalog is uh, in D standard, which we still like keeping. But uh, some of the songs uh, we've been uh, like kind of experimenting in later years are in a drop C, which is like you know uh, D standard with a the the lowest string tuned down uh you know holst a uh, whole tone so you can play riffs like uh well with one finger but uh, uh it's not it's not all of uh it's, it's not just about that you know you, you can play the stuff uh you might not be able to play in standard tuning that's that's the purpose yeah. so different different uh you know expression different uh mood yeah yeah, and what, what guitar rig are you using at the moment on tour? Uh, you mean amp-wise or guitar-wise? Yeah, both, oh. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. okay, I'm, uh, I'm endorsed by Schecter Guitars. Thank you, guys. <laughs> uh, they they do have an excellent care uh, about, of me. And um, I'm... Uh, so my main guitar is a uh, Ashba signature model, which I love. Uh, featuring uh, Wemmy Bar and Sustainiac. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with that. It's a, it's a pickup who can give you either endless tone or feedbacks. You know, it's uh, about uh, based on magnetic magnetic field. Yeah. Um, Amp-wise, well, well, for the last couple of years, we are using Quad Cortex by Neuro DSP. Really, like, you know, uh, semi-small things so uh, you have a consistent tone ish like uh, each and every night and we are we are uh, sending uh, straight to the front of house guy uh, our bill of James which is also our tour manager and uh, we are all on uh, in-ears monitoring yes yeah, so we, we don't use uh, a real amps on stage yeah, nice. So um, I've got to ask um, too, Zoe, can you tell me a little bit about, because I know you, you've done a couple of record, they've done a couple of new albums for the, the album there and the live, off the 2023 album there, that live album that was released. Can you tell me a little bit about kind of how you adapt your vocal performances compared to the live and the studio for Cradle? Well, uh, on the recent live album, that is Lindsay Schoolcraft. Ah, uh yeah, yeah, who is, again, fantastic to hear Linz because she killed it on that. Oh, um, nice. You know, I've been recording music now for almost a decade. And um, 
vocal techniques in terms of a healthy vocal technique that translates across, you know, both studio and uh, live performance, because everything is about being healthy with your voice. Studio is actually more challenging in some ways because you're going for hours and hours and hours doing the same thing over the. Uh, so, you no, know, both, uh, but also the challenge for live is that you have to do it right the first time as much as possible. I mean, you won't get it 100% right because it's a live performance, but the, those are the pluses and minuses, I would say, of both formats. Yeah, and the, the live performance is slightly different as well. You kind of have a little bit more fun and they're never going to be the exact same as the studio performances as well. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, so how, how do you, you maintain your vocal health like with these tours, especially some of the longer tours that Cradle have gone? The two biggest things that I always tell people when it comes to being a touring vocalist are you have to get enough sleep every night. That's huge. If you don't get eight hours of sleep, you're going to totally shoot yourself in the foot. And uh, you also have to stay hydrated. And for me, um, on this recent tour, I actually stopped drinking completely on tour. And that's been um, a really big game changer in terms of keeping my voice properly hydrated, I would say. Yeah, I think it's great to see. I've seen a lot more artists like going sober and talking about it. I think it's absolutely great. I'm I'm sober as well. I recently gave up a couple of years ago as well. So I think it's good when I hear artists going, "Hey, I didn't drink on the tour. I was doing, you know, I was focused on that." And I think to to really get where you need to go, you got to treat it like a professional job as it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I actually uh, at first I was nervous to be touring sober. Uh, and I'm actually sober here at home now as well. I'm going for full sobriety and I'm enjoying life more in general, sober and touring. I enjoy the performances more because I, I feel like I'm more present than I was before, perhaps. So I'm, I'm really enjoying this. Yeah, definitely. So um, I want to ask you, Ash, can you tell me a little bit about kind of how you come back to like writing guitar parts for, for Cradle of Filth and your parts for the albums and that like? Um, it depends on ideas, you know, uh, I'm, I'm actually inspired by any aspect of music, believe it or not, sometimes I'm inspired just by drums, uh, with, uh, with no, no music, uh, laid down, uh, at the moment. So, but, um, rhythm, rhythm is, uh, is the main thing. And, uh, I'm inspired by just any kind of ideas of, of my bandmates. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm just trying, you know, uh, not to overshine just the guitar parts. The, 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 um, it should be, you know, the, the sensible, the, the, the part of the music which makes sense. Yeah. And uh, that's what I'm trying and I think I'm getting better and better. Yeah, nice. Uh, that being said, I kind of did see a few sneaky bits and pieces through some emails and PR that you guys are working on some new material. Are you able to share any insights at all into the new music? And you must be excited too, Zoe, as well, to kind of get in there for this one, yeah? Well, yeah, beyond excited, I would say. Um, if you look at Dan's Instagram posts, the new Cradle of Filth music video was delivered to him, the final cut last week. So that's coming out quite soon. Uh, we have a new album coming out starting here. And then we're already working on the album after that as well. So there's so much new stuff coming. It's going to be like a floodgate opening up. Yeah, did you want to uh, add in anything there, Ash? Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, really excited for, for the new album. Um, um, Zoe mentioned that uh, in the past that it's a, it's a, it's a bit of throwback uh, on the band's catalog uh, with a with the new and fresh elements, you know, I don't, I don't want to do any like uh, massive spoilers, but uh, um, uh, I can't wait to, uh, for the people to hear it. Actually, yeah. it's gonna be a surprise. It's gonna be a surprise. Yeah, yeah I, I'm really looking forward to it. I've been a massive Cradle of Filth fan for ages. I was actually um and ah and about wearing my Cradle of Filth shirt for this one as well. Um, Ash, which one is that? Oh, yeah, the classic principle. Yeah, 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 dude. I've got um, a few mad fan as well. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about how you ensure the consistency with your guitar sound during the live performances there, mate? Uh, well, um, you mean uh, like uh, sound-wise? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, as I, as I mentioned, because uh, we are using those uh, 
the reason uh, the one of the reason uh, we uh, you know got those quad cortexes and uh, we are we used a bunch of uh, similar stuff in the past is that they are like uh, you know portable uh, we can we can fly with them you know so we are we are we are not depending on uh, on uh, any rental gear I mean locally which mm, at some places might be a disaster okay? so we basically have a like kind of similar ish sound each and every night because it's all stored and we are going to try to direct box XLRs to to the sound guy nice that, that being said what can the Australian fans expect on this tour sorry that being said what can the Australian fans look forward to on this tour oh yeah a great mix of uh, throwback tracks that you want to hear and some stuff off of the 2021 record existence is futile because Australian fans haven't heard that live yet. Yeah. So I think it's going to be something for everyone. Yeah, uh, killer, killer album. So uh, I'm going to ask you guys, what, what's your favourite Cradle of Filth songs to perform live and why? Oh, my favourites would probably be Saffron's Curse. Um, she is a Fire, the bonus track off the live record. Um, I really love the chorus hook on She Is A Fire. I think it's brilliant. And um, I don't know, probably on... Uh, I, really, I really, really enjoy playing Principle of Evil Made Flesh, that title track, because it's just such a high-energy moment. It, there's always moshing that breaks out for it. It's a great track. And yeah, nice. yeah, there are great moments uh, in, 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 uh, in every song. I mean, I can, I can agree with, uh, with the She Is A Fire, of course. Uh, Saffron's curse. I mean, I have. Yeah, we. I was never, like, uh, I, I never had uh, issues with uh, with any of the setlists because the band catalog is really, you know, like huge, and uh, there are way too many track, way too many great tracks to play. Uh, but uh, we would spend, you know, like, uh, it's gonna. Uh, it would be like uh, an evening with a cradle of filled for four and five hours. Yeah, so we need to mix things a bit. Yeah, well, so how, so how do you go getting that set list down? I was talking to Fred from OPETH, and he said the same thing. Like, if we were to play all of our, like, one track off each album, it'd be a five-hour bloody show. Exactly. If you have, a, like, you know, a 30 years uh, on the scene and uh, that many records, uh, it's, uh, you know, the making a set list, it's uh, becoming, uh, uh, you know, more difficult <laughs> yeah but that's not a bad place to be look guys i'm gonna let you bounce off to um the, the other interviews you got to do but do you have any last words shout outs thank yous or anything else you'd like to add in there before we sign out we pretty very much looking forward to be back in australia because it has been long five years and uh we're gonna be we're gonna be on fire nice we can't wait to be there it's gonna be awesome Nice. I will be there front row centre at the Adelaide show with my camera snapping some photos, but everybody cool. else you can catch them at Perth. Um, I did mention Adelaide is on the Wednesday. Perth is this Tuesday, then over to Melbourne on the 27th, Sydney's the 28th, and Brisbane the 29th. Till then, chuck some cradle of filth in your stereo, crank it up really bloody loud. Neighbours are going to want to hear it too. Cheers, guys. <laughs> See you. Thank you very Bye. much. Oi, you're tuned in to Dry That Aussie Metal, guys, so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of his sick content. And remember, stay brutal, you legend.